Perfect. Today we're going to talk about the uh, Philodendron Birkin. It's a really beautiful plant. Um, it uh, actually it occurred from a Philodendron Red Congo, and it has been a chimeric, uh, spontaneous mutation. So. Uh, the Philodendron Birkin has fantastic leaves. Um, if you look at these leaves, uh, they're very variegated. It really depends. Some are almost green, um, others are almost white, but you always have these really nice white streaks in their leaves. It's very hard for you to see, but I show you like that. And um, yeah, every leaf. Uh, practically looks different. So um, there's some leaves like this one. It came out almost red and this is um, because as I said in the beginning because it's mutation from the red Congo so sometimes the red Congo is shining through. Talk about the care of uh, Philodendron Birkin. First and foremost it's a very easy plant to care for and hasn't too many needs and certainly no needs that you cannot meet. So. Let's get started with the soil. So uh, for soil, um, the philodendron birkin needs a soil that is well draining as almost uh, all philodendron and um, in general aroid plants. Mixes uh, using a lot of peat uh, are usually great because uh, philodendron birkin needs a soil that is well draining but also retains water. So we want something that can hold on to water but if you water it, it's still well draining. Uh, for my plant here, I'm using a mix of actually something different. I have uh, perlite, I have some leca balls, I even have uh, some sphagnum moss. Also sphagnum moss you have to be careful because it gets very soggy. Uh, once you're watering it and you have to make sure that it doesn't stay like that uh, for a long time but you need something airy so uh, if you water like you should see the water coming right through the pot uh, it should like uh, start to drip after a few seconds uh, and then you know that you have a well draining potting soil but in, in general like it isn't too demanding in terms of uh, soil but just don't use a general potting mix uh, it's going to be too dense and it will lead to root rot and root rot is uh, a slippery slope like once root rot is starting it's spreading out to the other roots and the only thing you can do is just to really take out the plant uh, have a look at the um, at the roots and snip off the roots that are already mushy uh, because otherwise it will spread uh, to the rest of the roots that's it for soil Let's talk about light. So Philodendron birkin um, is, uh, is growing in the, uh, under the canopy in, a, in a tropical jungles. So uh, if you would keep it outside, um, semi-shade or something like that would be fine. But um, this is completely wrong if you keep it in, indoors. Usually Philodendron, uh, Monstera, they thrive under bright indirect light. Uh, what that means is that the uh, sunlight is not shining directly onto the leaves because that uh, would lead to burning of the, of the leaves. So how you, can you achieve that? Usually like an eastern facing window or also a west facing window are great. Uh, because there's um, in the east facing window, this is where the sun goes up, there's a couple of hours of uh, direct sunlight in the morning. This is actually perfect because the sunlight is not that strong in the morning. So either place in the east or also a west facing uh, window because there for the majority of the day the plant is going to get uh, bright indirect uh, sunlight which is perfect for this plant. So try for 10 to 12 hours of uh, bright uh, indirect light uh, if you can and yeah that's uh, absolutely sufficient for Philodendron Birkin. As I said, like direct sunlight I sometimes have the case that uh, leaves are, are starting to, to burn a little bit. After a couple of hours it will scorch the leaves, uh, especially like midday sun uh, is, is really too strong. But what you need to um, be wary of is that uh, if you have a lot of uh, variegation, like variegated plants tend to um, use a little bit or need a little bit of more light than their non-variegated counterparts. This is uh, because they're just uh, less chlorophyll, so the green parts contain a lot of chlorophyll and the white parts do not have um, chlorophyll so there's no way to photosynthesize for the plant. 
All right, we've talked about light. Um, let's have a look at watering also, um, not very complicated with the philodendron birkin. Uh, what I do is uh, I use my index finger. Uh, I just stick it into the soil. Um, I, I check, um, put it in two inches, so like five um, centimeters. I check the, the finger and um, if there's like almost no soil uh, sticking to my finger, I know it's time for me to water the plant again. As a general um, rule, it's often said uh, water about once a week, but of course um, this really depends on your environment, it, your um, air humidity, the temperature you have, how much sunlight or how much light in general um, your plant has will influence uh, how much or little uh, watering um, your plant will need in terms of the period in between waterings. But generally it's about once a week. Um, you should always um, check with your index finger whether the soil is still um, moist. Uh, if it's still moist you don't need to water. Once it became uh, dry or almost dry you can uh, water your plant again. On the safe side uh, this way I would say. Yeah that's almost all um, about watering in, in general. Uh, you can use regular tap water but uh, usually uh, if you have like distilled or reverse osmosis water this is really the best you can provide to your plant uh, because there's no like chlorines and uh, other uh, chemicals inside. Rainwater of course is, uh, is absolutely great uh, if you have this kind of water. Um, use that for watering. Otherwise tap water is just fine. All right, um, let's head over to temperature. In terms of temperatures, um, general uh, indoor temperatures that you already have in your um, house or apartment where you're living is uh, absolutely perfect for uh, the philodendron birkin. 65 to 75 uh, degrees uh, Fahrenheit during the day, so it's about 18 to uh, 24 degrees um, Celsius. That's absolutely fine for the plant. At night it can get a, a little bit colder, so uh, it should be around 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit at night, which uh, equals to 16 degrees Celsius. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, humidity. And if you see, like, if, if I do like this, I have like a little cheat sheet on, on the side. Humidity, you should keep the humidity as high as possible, I always say, for philodendron and uh, monstera plants, Araceae uh, in, in general. So uh, I would recommend 60% or more. In most households you will have like around 40 or 50. So if you can add a little more humidity, that's always great. So a humidifier a couple of times a day uh, is, is fantastic. If you have some kind of enclosure, uh, like a plastic container will tremendously help. You can almost reach like 100% uh, if you have like a closed plastic container. But then you can, cannot see your plant and usually we wanna see your um, philodendron birkin because it's really beautiful. If you can provide higher humidity, like most likely you will get better growth and um, better uh, nicer leaves and, and even bigger leaves but if not it's no problem like uh, philodendron birkin I have mine at like 40% uh, percent, uh, humidity uh, it does uh, perfectly fine so um, do not stress too much about that it's only if you want to max out uh, what you can get in terms of growth. All right Oh yeah, I haven't talked about um, humidifiers, so there's a lot of great humidifiers. I'm using a Levoit uh, humidifier, so I'm gonna uh, link it in the uh, description. It's really great because it has um, a big capacity. I only need to refill it like every week or two and it provides um, the plants with a lot of humidity. What I don't really like, what I also do not recommend, I did it in the beginning, is to spray your plants with a spray bottle. You can't really increase humidity like that, it's, it's a joke. What can happen though is um, if uh, the leaves are too wet for too long, they're gonna uh, wilt and uh, die and die off. So uh, I wouldn't spray your plants. You can try like a pebble tray and put in some water and um, maybe it's gonna increase the humidity a little bit. In terms of non-technical ways to increase the humidity, um, yeah, put it in a container or put plants really uh, closely together. Uh, this will help to increase the humidity at least a little bit. All right, fertilizer. In terms of uh, fertilizer, philodendron birkin also isn't uh, too needy. I uh, usually uh, fertilize my uh, philodendron birkin once a week but even like once a month uh, would be fine. It really depends on your regimen and also the amount of light you're providing. I use a very balanced fertilizer, so NP 
PK 12, 12, 12, uh, something around. That um, is uh, absolutely sufficient. Um, I fertilize less in, uh, in autumn and winter time because there's less uh, growth and the plant doesn't need uh, the additional nutrients. And um, yeah, using a, a balanced fertilizer really works great. But also in, in terms of fertilizer, it's, it's really difficult to uh, make like a general recommendation because if you want to do it correctly, you should know um, what kind of nutrients are already in the soil and only add the additional nutrients your plant might uh, need. But a general well-balanced fertilizer will do for sure. All right, propagation. Um, there's mainly like one way, or you can call it like multiple ways to propagate uh, philodendron birkin. The easiest one is just to take like a stem cutting. You see the different sections and nodes. Uh, you always need at least one node. So you just chop and cut your plant. And this is how you can uh, propagate it. Um, your plant will then start to get a new shoot and will start growing leaves again after a couple of uh, weeks. And the part that you cut off uh, is, is the cutting. There's many ways you can propagate the cutting in terms of media. Uh, what I recommend is sphagnum moss. I have the best uh, success with using sphagnum moss. I think the only thing you have to um, take into account is that you need it moist but not soggy. So if you water your sphagnum moss it's gonna uh, increase in, in size, it's gonna get heavier. Uh, but then you really need to drench it and only then add it to your uh, cutting so it's not too moist because I lost a couple of plants and also uh, roots because my sphagnum moss was too soggy. But that way like there's least risk in my opinion. You can also have a look at the cutting and see if uh, roots are starting to form. You can also always use uh, water propagation, just uh, put the cutting into the water. If you propagate your philodendron birkin that way, just make sure that no leaves are in the water because they're going to die off. And um, the big benefit of water propagation is that you can at all times see if roots are starting to form. Yeah, th these are the main ways. You can also do air layering. This is uh, when you basically leave the cutting on the plant. Uh, you use like, a plastic foil um, and you wrap uh, some sphagnum moss on uh, to the stem of the plant uh, where there are like air roots and um, you wrap it, uh, you keep it on like for a couple of weeks and then roots are starting to form and you then chop uh, your plant. This way uh, you, it's almost fail safe, you already have roots. Uh, but from my personal experience, uh, this is unnecessary as philodendron birkin propagates really nicely. Or you can do the nature me method, I would say. Uh, you just uh, cut it and you put it into the soil. What you need to do in, in terms of propagation is always to let the plant colors over or the cutting. So just uh, give it a couple of hours depending on the thickness of the stem before you do anything in terms of propagation because otherwise it could start to wilt so it could start to uh, develop rot uh, if you don't let the cutting dry. All right, in terms of growth, philodendron birkin can grow um, a foot and a half to uh, three feet in uh, height. I would say it's like a medium to fast grower. Every week or two, like you almost get a leaf. So this is uh, quite nice. It's not one of these uh, ultra slow uh, growing uh, house plants, but it's also not the, uh, the quickest for sure. All right, um, potting. In terms of potting, really straightforward. I have mine in a, in a plastic pot, terracotta pots, uh, ceramic pots, all kind of uh, pots are, are working. What you need to make sure is that you have drainage holes beneath, um, just some sphagnum moss fell out. That's really important. If you don't have drainage holes, uh, your soil will get soggy. The excess water cannot drain out of your pot and this is the perfect recipe for uh, root rot to form. So always use pots with drainage holes. Sometimes I know like really nice looking pots do not have drainage holes, but what you can do is you can have like a plastic um, pot and put it into the nice looking uh, pot and you just take it out for watering and this way you can drain uh, your pot really easily. So that's very important. That's, uh, that's a must do. All right, like the last topic I wanted to talk about is pests. 
So as you can see, you know, it's probably hard for you to see, but um, you have like a few spots on, on this plant. Um, I would say like philodendron birkin is quite prone to, uh, to pests. I had recently thrips. Um, I think my plant still has um, a couple of thrips. Yeah, this is bad. Um, they're very hard to get rid of. What you can do and try is um, you spray off the plant with, with water like every uh, couple of days but thrips can also be in the soil. So you also really need to drench your soil and try to flush out the thrips, but they are very pesky. It's, it's really hard to get rid of them. I don't really like to use a lot of chemicals. So I'm using Ambiselius um, Swirsky. They are um, beneficial um, nematodes as they are called. And what they are doing is they are hunting the larva of thrips and also the, the larger thrips and they are uh, going to eat and kill them uh, once they see them. So one of these uh, bags, they are good for, I would say like three to four uh, weeks. I just leave them on the plant and let the nematodes, the beneficial nematodes do their thing and this works really great against um, thrips and also some of the um, other pests yeah I think uh, that really sums it up yeah maybe let's talk about the price uh, point for a philodendron birkin I think a year or two ago they were really hard to find at least uh, in Europe but also in the US I think they have been sold for around 50 bucks price has come down I think nowadays you can find a philodendron birkin around ten dollars um, something like that and you can even uh, buy them in a supermarket it doesn't matter it's a, it's a beautiful looking plant uh, I really enjoy it and um, it's great to propagate and also to share and you never know like how the next leaf is going to look like so I think that's pretty cool and I'll just show you like a little close-up look how beautiful this plant is um, every leaf uh, looks uh, different and they spread nicely uh, the plant is uh, growing upright and upwards yeah really cool plant thanks for checking in plantophiles.com